October is Celiac Disease Awareness Month. You might be seeing what disease awareness month? If you are someone who doesn't feel very well after eating or suffers from a host of gastrointestinal discomforts, if you know what I mean, you could have celiac disease and just not know it. As someone who has the disease and a spokesperson for the nonprofit National Foundation for Celiac Awareness, it's my job to help explain. For most people, going out to dinner is a fun experience. Great food, laughs, and a break from the kitchen. But people who suffer from celiac disease have a lot more to think about when venturing away from their kitchens. They have to be sure they don't accidentally consume a protein called gluten. It is toxic to their systems and can make them very sick. Gluten is found in wheat, barley, and rye. That usually means everything from bread, pasta, fried foods, many sauces, and desserts are immediately off limits. In fact, for some celiac sufferers, even a crumb of bread can do the same harm as a whole loaf. Severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, bloating, headaches, irritability, and fatigue are just some of the symptoms. Some sufferers of this genetic autoimmune disease say they get a bit of gluten in their systems and they are bedridden for days. If a person is unaware they have the disease and they continue to eat foods with gluten, the body will not absorb nutrients in food. That leads to malnutrition and other complications like cancer, thyroid disease, osteoporosis, infertility, pregnancy complications, depression, and other autoimmune diseases. Celiac disease affects approximately 3 million Americans, but according to the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness, only 100,000 people know they have it. That means 97% of celiac sufferers are undiagnosed. All it takes is a simple blood test a positive result means take the gluten out of your diet and you will likely feel like a brand new person. If you are one of those people out there who just saw that and says, hey, I, I, I might have this, we want to give you some more answers from a physician, Dr. Eileen Sharabadi. She's a gastroenterologist at Georgetown University Hospital and specializes in celiac. Thanks for being here, doctor. Good what, morning. What is the most um, prevalent thing that you see when you are talking to patients that come into your office? Well, as you mentioned before, Heidi, a lot of patients uh, come to us with multiple symptoms. Uh, they can have the diarrhea, the abdominal pain, the bloating, the typical symptoms of celiac disease. But a lot of patients also present in an atypical way. Again, like you mentioned, they can just have fatigue, uh, irritability, some depression, uh, osteoporosis, infertility, joint pains. So celiac can manifest in different ways, in different manners. It can manifest at any time uh, of your life. So we can see children, adults, and even um, older people. And this is what makes it difficult sometimes to diagnose. People don't think about it. Uh, we are a little bit all guilty about it, all kind of physician. Uh, we rely on the typical symptoms of the diarrhea and the malnutrition, but again, it can present in an atypical manner. Yeah, I think the question I get the most though is, you know, why is this a big deal? So you have a sore stomach and, you know, you don't feel all that great uh, a lot of the time. How serious is it? It is very serious because when you have the diarrhea, it's actually a manifestation of the inflammation of your gut and injury to your gut. So when you're a small bowel who is responsible for absorbing nutrients and uh, vitamins is not able to do its work, you're going to develop a lot of uh, nutrients and vitamin deficiency. In children, they will not grow the way they should grow. Adults can lose weight. You lose iron, vitamin B, calcium, and vitamin D, and all this will lead to anemia, uh, neurological disorder, osteoporosis. So it does have an overall effect on your health, not just giving you GI symptoms. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, when they hear uh, the possibility or the increased chances of getting cancer, really start to um, wonder if they are doing everything that they can for their bodies and possibly might then um, help them get to the doctor's office and get tested. Absolutely. There is an increased risk of uh, two types of cancer in patients with celiac disease when it's left untreated. Uh, one is a non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which is a type of malignancy of the blood, but that can also occur in the small bowel. And there's also an increased risk of GI cancer. It can affect uh, uh, any 
uh, location, the GI tract, from the food pile, the small bowel, the large bowel, and the liver. And uh, by treating your celiac disease, uh, you will decrease your risk of developing these malignancies. Okay, so gluten-free, gluten-free, gluten-free. Um, we are getting better at knowing what that word is, and when people go to the grocery store, I've heard a lot of friends uh, come up and say, hey, everything that I'm seeing now, not everything, but a lot of things I'm seeing now actually say gluten-free. What is gluten? And it's, it's tough to explain. So gluten is a part of a protein found in wheat, rye, and barley mostly. And so um, in theory, it should be easy or relatively easy to avoid these uh, uh, grains. However, gluten can be found in uh, many food, especially prepared food, uh, medication, cosmetics. Uh, it is often used in prepared food as emulsifier or stabilizer. So gluten can hide in a lot of different food that you don't think uh, they contain wheat, rye, or barley. Yeah, even medications. Absolutely, even medication. And uh, as you mentioned, before the uh, patient with celiac disease they will require vitamin supplementation and one of the tricky part is to find the right vitamin that does not contain gluten and unfortunately uh, my understanding is it's tough to research this because really there are no drugs to actually treat celiac disease so quickly before we let you go uh, the research money is tough to come by well for now, the treatment is to avoid gluten. And unfortunately, um, there's not a lot of research money going into understanding better uh, what is celiac disease and how to treat it better. So pharmacological, uh, I'm sorry, uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, haven't been interested yet in looking for a drug uh, that will help patients with celiac disease. And that would be a wonderful thing, especially yeah. for children who had to follow a very restrictive diet. Well, we appreciate that, and we're going to be talking a lot more about all of those things, uh, specifically the pharmaceuticals, uh, coming up later in the week. Dr. Eileen Chirabadi, thanks so much for your time here today. I want to direct people also to the website. More information about celiac disease symptoms and treatments, you can go to www.celiaccentral.org.